On this edition of Check 6 Aviation, it's time to raise the roof. All right, my friends, we're back at it out here in the in my yard here. Well, it's not my yard, I, I'm renting the place, but still, uh, this is what we've got going on here. So we've got uh, 10 foot, two by four, and I've got some 12 foot. I probably didn't need the 12 foot, but I figured it'd be better to have too much lumber than not enough. Uh, and I'm constructing the roof joists for up there. And we're going to take the whole week and get as far as we can on this project uh, before I have to go back to work on the 8th, November 8th. So uh, what I've done is I've taken my, my roofing square here and I have, this is a 90 degree angle for all 45 and can taken the pivot point and gone to 60 degrees right there making sure that i've got it right at the pivot point and marked it so we'll use 60 degrees here and 30 degrees up at the peak and we'll go ahead and add some bracing to right down the center and we'll make it look good and keep it sturdy too now i've got a couple inch a couple more sheets of uh half inch plywood for either side, the outside, and we'll go ahead and wrap these in Tyvek before we put it up. And I've got uh, some other bracing right here that we will go ahead and use to keep everything, you know, to attach it. I might have to do, this'll go up top, and I might have to do a double the double joist in the in the front and the back give it a little bit more strength um overkill perhaps but it's better to have too much than not enough so i've got i also have to trim the tyvek up top but that'll uh, come as things progress here but we are in the home stretch of the home stretch i think getting there getting close so let's get to it. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm kind of making a jig. Now that I've got the, the geometry all set up, I will have a 16 foot two by four running for the top. So I'm, I've got one of the uh, one of the angles that I've cut off here to kind of got, act as a, uh, a you know, act as a gap. And then I'm going to go ahead and take some of the excess from the 12 foots that I cut and make a, um, make a, a you know, kind of something for them to sit to, for the 16 foot uh, two by four to set in as a support piece. So that will go ahead and be, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and make a, you know, a, you know, get some, uh, some of the old uh, uh, plywood and buttress. No, it's not a buttress. Um, I forget what it, I forget what the the terminology is called. Leave a comment down below if you if you remember if you know what I'm what I mean. Uh, and that's how it's going to do. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of putting in some uh, screwing in some plight some uh, scrap wood to kind of make this process a little easier. So let's get back to it. This is about the time when I figured that it was very important that I figure out where the center portion is of the middle of the bottom tr of the truss. And you saw Christina there. Sammy just brought over one of his brand new toys that really proved to be super critical in getting a lot of these angles right. Even though the the uh, the roofer square 
did a really good job. It really didn't turn out to be all that consistent. The miter saw actually did the trick. Hmm. As I'm getting on the gussets here, you might see a bit of my wife with our dog. She's very proud of our fur boy. Uh, Reese is his name. He's a little poodle, about seven years old right about now. And sometimes I feel like I've been replaced, but that's okay. Alrighty, first one done. I had wanted to put a cross, uh, a support brace in the middle here, but I think I'm going to forego this, forego that on this one at least, maybe, or maybe I'll do it all like this. Either way, the um, uh, the angle and the support bracing there should be enough to hold it. Plus, with it cramping down on the on the two by four in the middle uh, going the length the length of the roof that should be enough i've got about oh let's see one down 12 more to go maybe maybe 13 who knows 14 something like that because i may have like i said i may have to double these up I may have to double these up uh for the front oh well, that's that's the front and then the back so back to work. All right, guys, it is Friday, November 5th, as of the, as of the recording date and time of this video. Uh, we've got some major progress here. We've got some, we've got almost all of the trusses that I need for the roof. We've got one on the table, one more to make. But for right now, we have to get everything out of here and lay down some new flooring. Why? Because the plane, the first kit, the empanage kit is on its way about mid morning in a few hours here. So exciting news, but I gotta get to work. So. Let's go. The reason why I wanted to lay down new plywood on the floor is because the existing plywood, the original plywood, has been exposed to the elements for so long that I didn't want to have, I, wanted, I also wanted to have the additional support. The existing plywood, uh, the original plywood was laying uh, across the, you know, the, the structure uh, from one long end to another long end and this the new sheets I put uh, from front to back so it, it's kind of giving an additional uh, support for the floor and plus I at this point I thought that I would have to put I was going to put the actual crate I was going to be able to get the crate into the workshop to begin with well that didn't happen as you'll see here so, here everything comes out, and I start the process of laying the new sheets of plywood. All right, so big disclaimer here. Obviously, I am not a professional builder at all, and it kind of shows because, well, there's a little, there's about a half inch gap over there where it butts up against here. So, what's my fix? Well, let's put it this way. I'm a better truck driver than I am a builder. So, we just kind of measure here. Yeah, about, uh, a little over three quarter inch, right about there, and then we go ahead and shave off about three quarter, about the same amount over there to this corner here, 
and uh, yeah so let me double check that and get the measurements right and then get this thing over to the, the table saw all right well i got half of the new flooring down which is a good thing because fedex is here <sighs> very exciting time so let's go take a look hey michael if you wanted to get a peek at where it's going oh, i don't know if <laughs> i know that's why i moved the car <laughs> I mean, I, is there a way that, I know it's, I know it's long, I know it's like 10 feet long, but it should fit sideways through the, through the, uh, the gate there. But it's, if you see the, the Tyvek, what? Uh, yeah. that's my workshop, or at least it will be. <laughs> yeah. I've got some plywood I can lay down in the grass. Oh boy. Let's see, we've got. Yeah. Did they stack something on top of this? Oh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what they do. Uh. Yeah, because I'm wondering if this if this crate's gonna hold up. Lift, no push. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm definitely going to be. Well, they say inventory everything. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I don't know. FedEx, or I don't think, it, I don't know if it was Vans, I don't think so. That did a. Um. If, if you're able to, back up against, because uh, that's why I moved the car. Yeah. I'm just saying this thing still not going to fit this lift gate here, so I don't know how it's going Right. And it's 300 pounds, so uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not about to ask anyone to throw out their back. What you're about to see here is, well, you can already see some of it. FedEx. While a great company to get your packages there overnight if you really need them, they don't seem to be the most gentle company with large crates. Now, to be fair, um, I found that Vans could have done a better job, maybe used some glue in some spots, uh, but overall, the vans don't now don't get me wrong the my experience with vans aircraft has been nothing but stellar so far the the damage to the crate here that you're seeing is 100 percent fedex's fault a freight claim was was made and we did find some damage on some parts and vans went ahead and shipped the replacement parts right out so there's absolutely no fault know that I see with vans so here you see a strap at the other end and we were able to manhandle this off of the truck and into the yard I decided that showing all of the trusses being made was just too repetitive so this is the only one you're gonna see except for the gables all right we're back at it it's another day I, yeah I've spent all day yesterday Kind of getting further on the on the on the um, the rafters, um, the the trusses, yeah, the trusses. Uh, what I've also done is because I'm going to use what I was using as my workbench to uh, yeah, to make the the front and the back side. Basically, I've, what I've done is I've taken and I've doubled it up. I tend to over-engineer things 
and that's okay. Uh, but I'm going to use the plywood uh, for the front here, and that's going to be the front and the back wall, fa you know, the facing. So, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get to it. We'll go ahead and take some, some Gorilla Glue and glue this up. And we'll, well, first of all, I want to go ahead and, and mark, uh, put the plywood on and mark where I need to stop and then get to it. So we'll see you on the other side of this. All right, so with the, assi with the assistance of my lovely wife here, I've got, went ahead and put the plywood front or back, whichever the case may be, on, and it is largely flush with the bottom, especially in the corners. What is not flush, I can always kind of sand off and get that. And so now we go ahead and pick this up and tip it up and I'll trim off the excess off of the peak with this. All right, so now that the out the exterior wall is trimmed and complete, I will use some of the scraps to complete the corners like that. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be the same uh, same way with the green, just as long as that these two edges here butt up, and I'll trim off the rest of it that doesn't fit that doesn't. Uh, just like I did with the uh, with the rest of it. So let's go ahead and take care of that. A little Gorilla Glue, <sighs> making sure that the surface is clear. There's that, and. Make sure that that's butted up against there. There's that. Then we'll go ahead and screw it down and get it nice and tight. And then we can say voila, whatever that means. I'm sure it's French. Um, maybe means, hey, look here. Because, well, we're saying, hey, look here. And that's about right in line with. Yeah, that's about flush. Yep, that's flush, flush enough. Sounds like a fabulous Thunderbirds doing construction. Are you flush enough? <laughs> then went over here. All right, now to trim. Now what I did was I did, I actually did two trims. Yeah, started off over here. Cut off most of the excess. And then did a finer trim. Later on, later, uh, later on, later. I've noticed that if I go a little bit too fast, I get this 
this rough the rough edge there but yeah I just learned something and it just scrapes right off okay cool and then <laughs> instead of having a blower I just use my drill and that cleans it that cleans everything right off so all right back to work all right finally i've got all of the trusses complete that was the last one i've got my buddy sammy over here to kind of help things out get us up there as we work around the crate of hmm i don't know what i hope everything is in, is okay in there but uh oh my so let's get back at it because that crate's got to get in there this weekend thankfully it's not going to rain this weekend at this point you'll see me try and get that first gable in there well that proved to be a bit more challenging than what sammy and i were able to manage so we put those off to the side for the time being and chose to install the rest of them now we did end up doing a kind of an alternating pattern uh, what you see the ones going up with the center support in and there's another one going in without so we kind of alternated it I felt that uh, it would be a kind of a good mix structurally speaking to support our weight or uh, anyone who got up on the roof uh, to put the plywood up there because we didn't we didn't really use nails up there we use screws because I don't want this thing coming apart pure and simple this thing is built to stay, and I, I, I kind of go old school in that thinking. All right, we're back at it, and well, let me show you this. We actually got some work done today, being Saturday. We, you know, went, family and I went to the Veterans Day Parade. Uh, it was an awesome, awesome parade. Short, but sweet. But uh, my buddy Dave and I came. You know, my buddy Dave came over, and we got the gable ends up. We attempted to get this 16-foot board into the center notches there, in, at the peak. But I built it a little bit too close. It wasn't to spec. So my wife went ahead and trimmed some of them. We were able to get something up there and hopefully we'll go ahead and be able to go ahead and get this board here in all the way across so let's get to it several song filled hours later as you can see it was very windy the day that we put the tyvek over the gable ends we did have this particular sheet of tyvek come off a few, uh, off of the few staples that we were able to put in at first and that's the main reason why we have some bubbles in there. I don't know if that's going to uh, come to, back to haunt us in the future. We also didn't care that the Tyvek writing was not level. But here, going coming up in a second, the very first sheet of plywood going up on the roof. And let me tell you, we decided that we, after seeing that the two sheets of plywood for the front and the back half of the roof on each side we're not going to be on a truss and give us a good seam, a good place. Uh, we decided to leave the center section open and cut custom sheets of plywood to fill in that gap. All right, it's been a long, hard day and we have got a lot done. I don't know if you can see this right now because it is kind of dark outside, but we've got four sheets of plywood up here, but here's the catch. Tomorrow, I have to go back to work. So what we've done is we've put some plastic up there above, above the peak. We've got lights on inside. My wife is busy uh, getting things organized. We're going to go ahead and start cracking open that crate and inventorying everything before I have to go home tomorrow or uh, go back on the road tomorrow. And it's only about seven o'clock, almost eight o'clock at night here. So I figure I've got about a good four hours to go ahead and get everything out of that crate, inspect it for damage and uh, go through it. Uh, so my, I've got up until Tuesday to go through to complete the inventory checklist. My wife says that she can go ahead and get that done while I'm on the road. So God bless her. I really, I really appreciate everything that she's done for me. Two weeks later. 
All right, now both sides of the roof are shingled at sunset. Now, when it came to the lower half of the roof on each side, I was able to help out. My wife and I did uh, both did the shingling together, but when it came to the upper half and also putting the paper up there, the tar paper, she said, no, you stay down here. I don't want you falling off the roof and having to miss work and, because you're hurt. So God bless her. She is an amazing lady. And here you see her kind of up there doing her thing and hamming it up because that's just who she is. Oh my God, I love that woman so much. Now, here is a moment of truth, the final shingle going in. I still have to trim those other shingles, but that'll get done before I go back out on the road here for the first load of the brand new year in 2022. And if you haven't followed us already on Instagram, please, by all means, do so. You'll get updates and join our Patreon team because we have some very special and cool things for you. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and by all means, follow us on our other social media sites. Links are down below. And one thing that you've got to do is stay safe out there, guys, and always check your six. Bye for now.